Hello, welcome or welcome back to another episode of Angela Shows You. Today, I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about um, Alaska. So I have made a couple videos over the last couple weeks about vacationing and cruising in particular. And uh, so I wanted to get on and just share with you some of my experiences from our cruise to Alaska that we came back from recently. So I talked a little bit the other day about um, like more travel specific. So this one I wanted to talk a little bit more about shopping while you are in port and the different uh, cruise excursions that are available and the shopping that's available to you while you are docked in port at some of the various uh, ports of call on Alaskan cruises. So I would imagine that it probably doesn't matter what cruise line you cruise on. My husband and I chose Carnival Cruise Line um, and we had stops at Skagway, Ketchikan, and Juneau. And um, the order of the stops was actually we went to Skagway first and then we went to Juneau and then we stopped at Ketchikan and in between those stops we had um we had a day at Tracy Arm Fjord so I will say that I uh, I had booked of uh, several excursions prior to going on our cruise because some of them do tend to sell out early and so if there's something that you want to do that you're interested in, I would book it ahead of time and not wait until you get on the cruise because you never know if something that you want to do may uh, fill up uh, capacity wise. But there are also some excursions that I learned through experience of going to these ports that you probably don't necessarily need to book ahead of time and you'll be okay and you can save yourself a little bit of money. So I made myself some notes. So if I look down, it's only because I am referring to a piece of paper that I had made myself some notes on because I didn't want to miss anything. So we stopped at Skagway first and we had booked an excursion doing... Um, a breakfast at a old uh, working girls establishment and it was it was very interesting it was in very interesting to hear the history and um, you know like go through and we learned a lot about what life was like for these girls who were um, working so we had the the tour guide picked us up in a bus at the port and she did a tour of Skagway which we learned very very quickly how small Skagway is. So while the excursion itself was very educational. I mean, I'll definitely give it it was entertaining, it was educational. The tour guide that we had was, she was excellent. She was funny. She shared a lot of tidbits and knowledge about the town, city. I'm not really sure what, what Skagway is considered, but it's very, very small. She told us that Skagway is eight blocks wide by 22 blocks long or vice versa. Um, so it's very, very small and the majority of things to see and do are right, very walking distance in the port. We actually, um, we didn't take the bus back to the port. We, we got off, she made a stop in the downtown area and we stopped and we got off and we just walked and then we walked back to the port. But I mean, if you're talking, um, you know, a town that's eight blocks by 22 blocks, that's not very big. So if you are, you know, 
able to walk around and get around easy enough, then you could easily walk a lot in Skagway. Now I will, so I want to say that there is there is a lot of shopping in Skagway. Um, our tour guide pointed out to us that there's one grocery store and I think she said there was 27 jewelry stores. So if you are looking for jewelry, <laughs> you will have a wide variety to pick from in Skagway. The prices were pricey. Um, you know, there were a lot of gift shops, lots of places that had great souvenirs. They had a lot of magnets and keychains and ornaments for Christmas trees. And of course, t-shirts and hoodies and jackets and stuff like that. But we, we went into, you know, quite a few stores after the, the breakfast tour, um, that we did was over because we actually were in Skagway for 12 hours. And honestly, um, six or eight would have been a more than enough time. I mean, our, our tour and our breakfast was like an hour and a half. And then we walked around for a couple hours and, you know, kind of just roamed in and out of places. And then we went back on the ship and I, we had lunch on the ship that day. Um, you know, and just kind of hung out on, on board and waited until it was time to take off and move on to the next port of call. I just, you know, personally, I didn't think that there was enough to do in Skagway to call for 12 hours. Now, if you can, if you can swing it financially, there was a um a train tour that actually sounded really really interesting and after the day was over with i talked to a few people who you know you just kind of ask you know like hey what did you do today and i t ended up talking to a few people who did that train tour and it sounded beautiful and amazing but even that was three hours so that's why i'm saying i think six or eight hours in skagway would have been plenty of time because even the longest excur excursion that i saw was only like three or four hours so it still leaves time to go about so if you're looking to plan your day and you know you want to see some sites the train tour might be something that you might consider because it's longer and from just the things that everybody said, it was absolutely beautiful. And it sounded to me like there was two options for the train tour. One was just, um, so it sounded like it was an out and then a little bit of a loop and you come back. And one tour sounded like it stopped and people had the opportunity to get off. And then the other tour sounded like it was just a ride out and back and there was no opportunity to get off. So I would say read your descriptions, um, you know, in your either online or in the excursions catalog and just see what the options are um, and book accordingly. In Tracy Arm Fjord, I had actually looked um, on Carnival when I was looking for excursions multiple times and it didn't look to me like there was going to be any opportunity to get off. However, apparently there was. There was two times so it sounded like because we kept moving and then we would stop and so they actually had these smaller boats come and pick up a group of passengers and they went out and it sounded like they got a little bit closer to some of the um icebergs and uh, I don't know if they got really close to any glaciers or not, but it sounded like, and unfortunately I didn't hear about that until literally the morning of like we were in there, uh, in the, um, in the area kind of, you know, cruising along and people started talking about that they were 
taking this excursion and they had to make sure that they were watching for the time. So really what we did was we went up into the, you know, just kind of floated along in the water and then turned around and came back. And so if they were on the morning or the afternoon, sounded like their, their little mini boat was meeting up with the cruise ship and dropping off passengers and loading up new passengers. That one, though, I actually looked to see because they had, I think it was a four o'clock. They had the four o'clock time slot wasn't sold out. By the time I had heard about it, I think it was like noon and four. Um, the noon time slot was all sold out. The four o'clock time slot did still have openings available. However, it was, I want to say it was $229 a person. And I just, I said to my husband, unless this is something that you really want to do, I just don't know that spending almost $500 to get on this boat, to get a little bit closer is something that I want to drop. That's a lot of money. Um, you know, so we kind of agreed that no, we didn't want to spend because it was, so four hundred and sixty dollars um, to go from one boat to a smaller boat just to get a little bit closer to some of the icebergs and glaciers just didn't sound something like something that financially we wanted to bite into. Um, many people did, and they did get some great photos. So again, if it's something that you have the financial means to do and you want a, a deeper experience of the area, then by all means, you know, watch for it and, you know, purchase it early. Because like I said, I didn't even know that it was going to be an option to get off the cruise ship until that morning. And I was like, oh, you know, because I had been looking all along to see and it just looked to me like it was going to be like kind of like when we did the Panama Canal Transit you when we were in the Panama Canal area you weren't getting off it was really the experience of going through the canal and then hearing all about how um how the the new canal area came to be and you got into the the lock and if you were coming or going depended on if your if your vessel was so we went out and back but so when we got when you floated in you stopped in the lock and the water drained and then you moved to the next one, the water drain, and you moved to the next one, and the water drain. And then we turned around and came back up. So then we were going up, up, and up until we got back out into the, the main area. It was very interesting. That was another thing that was extremely educational. However, by the time we went down, 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 and got in, I was like, okay, I don't necessarily need to stand there and do the whole, you know, thing going up, up, up. So I just looked for onboard activities while we were there. So I guess I just assumed that the Tracy Arm Fjord was going to be the same experience. And we did get out. Now, if you're not going to get on, get off the ship, you will want probably fairly early if it's sites that you think that you want to see. The front of the ship, actually, um, people grabbed a bunch of chairs and they were kind of just sitting there. Some people, I thought, were sitting there, you know, and they were up and down and up and down and not really giving other people an opportunity, you know, and, and the way they kept coming up and other people were commenting, you know, like, could you please sit down so I can get some photos? Um, so if it's sites that you think you want to see, I would recommend getting to either one of the railings or the front of the ship early so that you get a seat if that's if this is something that you you know you're really interested in. Other people just kind of came, took a few pictures, and then you know kind of went about uh, their day because we lucked out. It was very beautiful. It wasn't super windy. It wasn't really all that cold. I only had on uh, a t-shirt with a light hoodie over it and I was okay for a while. 
Um, my fingers did start getting a little bit cold. My nose got cold. So I actually, I think I stood out there for probably about an hour and then I went back inside because I needed to warm up and my husband stayed out for a little while longer. And I think he probably got uh, some other photos. We did not see any mountain goats. Uh, someone said that they saw a bear um, but you know, these were all like off in, in the distance. I didn't see a bear. I didn't see a mountain goat. I didn't see any whales or dolphins. I didn't see any eagles. So I, but I'm sure that that is, you know, just kind of going to depend on the activity of the wildlife. You know, that's, that's either hit or miss. And it just, unfortunately, it was a miss for us that there none of the wildlife was really active um you know that we were able to to see so on to juno we did an excursion in juno we did the mendenhall glacier and that was absolutely beautiful that was well worth the expense it was i it was amazing um we there was a waterfall there was the, of course the glacier we did a hike and it was um we used our watches because my husband and I are runners and we hike a lot so we have um Garmin watches and so we turned those on and we used those and I think we ended up with a little bit over two miles we did um the path out one way and then there was a path and then it kind of came back around another area so we did both of them because we had a couple hours so there was enough time to do that and it was beautiful the hike was it was not challenging at all i wore trail shoes but if you only have sneakers totally doable with just sneakers on in fact i said afterwards i could have left the trail shoes at home there was there was nothing that called for anything other than just a good sneaker it was a paved path and um it wasn't icy or it didn't rain out so it wasn't even really all that wet um except for you know the area where when we got a little bit closer to the waterfall then of course that was wet but my feet didn't get wet either so I don't want to make it sound like you know you don't need rain shoes or galoshes or anything I mean my my feet didn't get wet and I had on the trail shoes and I wore wool socks and I was fine if if you worry, if you get cold, um, you might want to get a pair of wool socks. I like smart wool socks and you can get those at REI. You can get them at Dick's. I buy mine at Fleet Feet. Um, I'm sure there's other places, any store that does any kind of outdoor um activities you're going to be able to find like a smart wool or a merino wool sock and uh so if your feet tend to get cold maybe you just wear your regular sneakers and maybe a wool sock that will keep your foot a little bit warmer and wick away any of the moisture that uh you you know might encounter while you're out there and that probably really for any day they're great I wear wool socks all year. They're great in the wintertime. They keep your feet warm. They're great in the summertime. They actually keep your feet cooler. So I love the wool socks. So that might be a great option in Alaska too, is to you know wear a warmer sock if your feet tend to get colder. So I mentioned that we lucked out with the weather. I actually took uh, like eight or nine pairs of socks and I think I only ended up wearing like three pairs of socks. I wore socks and sneakers the three days that we got off the port in Ketchikan, in Juneau, and in Skagway. But otherwise, I actually got away with wearing my flip-flops while we were just around on the board um, because the weather just worked out that way. And if my feet did start to get cool, then I went inside and I warmed back up and then I would go back out on the deck. So we really, really did luck out with ideal weather uh, while we were gone. So Juno was beautiful. When we got back from our excursion, we had time right there in the port. 
there was again there was a ton of shopping if you're into crab legs they have a, a king crab right there my husband and i went into uh the red the red onion i think it was called the red onion saloon and we had a, a shot and we had some brisket nachos and they were amazing they were delicious um so there was plenty to do i felt like that the time that we had there i felt like that was perfect we got back on board and i think we still had about an hour but we had gone into all the stores that we wanted to and we Actually, when we got back from our excursion, we walked down the main street a little bit because there was a bridge and there was an eagle there. So my husband was able to get um, a photo, a good photo of a, one of the bald eagles. So that was a lot of fun. And then we turned around and we walked back. But we only maybe a half a mile we walked out um, of the, the, you know, like downtown area. Uh, I actually got a couple really good pictures. Everything was very colorful and there was a, you know, a fair amount of shopping to do. Juno, the prices were better than they were in Skagway. Someone said that Juno is not uh, accessible by um, vehicle. Uh, there was vehicles there, of course, but I think I thought someone said that Juno actually like you have to either fly in or you boat in. I don't know enough about the area and our tour guide, you know, she didn't really talk about that. We actually ended up we talk a lot more about eagles and eagle nests. And she spent a good amount of time talking about the northern lights and the how long or short their days are with the um, extended periods of light and the extended periods of dark, which was a uh, very interesting as well. So I, you know, I think probably some of the conversation that the tour guides give is probably partially driven a little bit by what are people interested in hearing and you know that some things we just didn't really get to touch on too much we had spent a lot more time people were asking a lot more questions about the northern lights and about uh the um you know the bald eagles and their nests and stuff we did spend a little bit of time talking about a little bit of other wildlife we talked a little bit about um they had a a wolf uh there that was really really unusual and so that was a a really interesting story to hear as well our tour guide for that her name was colleen and she sounded like she had been doing these kind of tours for years and she's lived in the area all her life so she just had a lot of of firsthand knowledge and experience from being a you know native to the area where when we were in Skagway the tour guide that we had was only there for the summer tour season and then she was going back and it sounded like Skag probably a lot of Alaska is probably like that where they have an influx of people who are there during the you know the summer months where it's a tour season and then when it gets to be fall and winter time they go to whatever state it is that they're from and then repeat that again the next year so it was really interesting though to have a tour guide that was from Alaska and she talked a lot about um just a lot of like older history and stuff. So that was very, very interesting. And then the other stop that we had was in Ketchikan. And that was our, that was our shortest stop on our cruise. And I really felt like we could have used a couple more hours there. So I didn't book an excursion in Ketchikan, but I was in, kind of, I was a little bit interested in the Lumberjack show and I had done a little bit of research before the cruise and I saw that the Lumberjack show was extremely close to the cruise port. So I had actually opted that we were going to buy, if we were going to go to the Lumberjack show, I was going to just go there and buy my tickets at the door as opposed to buying the excursion on the cruise. 
part of the reason that I did that was because the lumberjack show was right there. I mean, literally you walk off the boat, you do a couple steps and there's a big sign that said that, you know, like the lumberjack show is here. So you had to walk there anyway. And we're used to the physical activity. So it's like, we could walk there. It's like a quarter of a mile. Why would I pay like 70 or $80 to carnival to walk to the lumberjack show and then go in and sit down and then we, we you know we're going to walk around anyway i want to say that the tickets to the lumberjack show were like 39.95 or so it's 40 dollars a person we actually we kind of hemmed and hawed they had three lumberjack shows going on um that day it was I want to say maybe like nine o'clock eleven o'clock and I don't know no that can't even be right I don't know there was three lumberjack shows that day and the lumberjack shows were one hour long each so you know we kind of hemmed and hawed a little bit and we we ended up not doing it but I think if we ended up going back, it is something a lot of people talked about how funny it was and it sounded like, you know, it was uh, educational as well a little bit, but we ended up, we walked in and out of so many stores. Ketchikan was just, it's, again, it wasn't large. It was bigger, definitely bigger than Skagway was, probably about the same size uh, you know, the port area is Juno was, but we didn't do any excursions. We just walked all over the place. We walked in and out of every gift shop that they had in there. We didn't go in to any of the jewelry shops. We did go into a jewelry shop in Juno and my husband bought me a beautiful whale's tail and it had um, the Alaskan state flower, the forget me not on it. There was actually three of them on the whale tail, one in a blue and then one that was a pink and one that was a white. And it's actually very beautiful. And because of the, the time that we chose to go, we were getting towards the end of the cruise season. So things in Alaska are starting to wind down. So if you want something to consider might be if you think you're going to do a lot of shopping and if you think that you're going to want things like jewelry, there are a lot of knives as well. Um, and some of those were absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, a lot of hand carved things. So Carnival does not allow certain knives to be on board. Um, so a lot of the stores that sell knives will actually ship them. Uh, some ship them for you. Some of them, uh, you have to go to the post office. So my niece bought a knife when we were in Skagway and they walked over to the post office and she mailed it to herself. My husband bought a knife when we were in Ketchikan. Now we were in Ketchikan on a Sunday. So of course the post office wasn't open. The store that he purchased the knife from for $20, you filled out a form and then they said that they were going to mail the knife to us. Now, um, so, of course, the post office isn't open on Sunday, so it sounded like they were going to ship it either Monday or Tuesday. We haven't received it yet. However, I know that, you know, with Alaska, just their location and mail service, you know, we're not expecting that knife to come probably until at least the middle of next week, if not, the, you know, maybe in, even a week from now. Today is Saturday, September 2nd. So we're not exactly, you know, um, it's coming. It just, we don't have it yet, but there were a lot of really beautiful knives. Um, a lot of hand carved the, some of the blades had beautiful engravings on them. The handles were just stunning. Some of them were made out of like walrus and I forget some of the other things that some of these were made out of, but so if my point is that if you are, a knife collector or a jewelry collector or you know kind of a, a variety of other things there were a lot of things that were on sale because so we went um like i said towards the end of august and cruise season 
I think there's only probably two or three more weeks left. So these these areas that these tourist areas, they're, they're starting to wind down for the season. So they're very willing to work with people on prices. A lot of clearance sales were going on. So the whale tail necklace that I got, we actually got a, a very, very reduced rate. And the knife that my husband ended up getting, they took $150 off of the price of the knife because they knew that they only had a couple weeks left and you know they were just kind of looking to make these sales because they're going to be uh, very very slow for the fall and winter months that are coming up ahead so if you're if you're a bargain hunter then going it towards the end of the season for Alaska might be a very good idea for you because you can work a lot with the shop um, owners or even, you know, the staff, like the girl that we worked with, she wasn't an owner. She was, you know, just an employee, but she said, let me go ask the owner. And she came back out and said, you know, the owner said we can take $150 off of the, the price of this particular knife. So ask, it doesn't hurt to ask, especially when it's getting towards the end of you know their season they are probably a lot more willing to work with people than they would be at the very beginning of their season because you know they probably know well we don't necessarily need to mark these down although i could be wrong you know it probably doesn't hurt to ask but a lot of places just offered or even had signs in the window, you know, saying that that, that they were uh, having big clearance sales. So it doesn't hurt to, you know, just ask if, you know, they're going, if they're able to work with a little bit on the price. Now, I would say as a crafter, you definitely want to be a little bit mindful because a lot of these things are made by locals and you don't want you want to ask without being insulting because a lot of work goes into making things that you're selling. You, If you're a crafter, then you know, you know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears goes into making things. However, a, a small craft is probably a little bit different than, you know some some of these other things like these knives and the statues um you know i got this adorable little wood bear and he's holding a salmon in his mouth we didn't ask for any kind of discount on that but like all these things are they're all hand carved and you know so you you kind of want to be mindful of somebody somebody used their skill and they made these, um, you know, so just kind of, you know, tactfully, if you're going to ask for a price, ask, you know, is this something that the store would is, you know, be willing to negotiate on the price a little bit and see what they say. Um, some probably most places will, but you don't, you do just want to keep in mind that this is their livelihood. Um, so, you know, if they offer you, you know, 50 or a hundred dollars or, you know, $150, like that was a big discount. That was way more than we were anticipating. So, um, just, just a little bit of food for thought, I guess, is, you know, all I'm saying. So in Juneau and in Alaska as well, um, so we booked an excursion through the cruise line, but I will say that there were stands right outside on the dock and there were a lot of local tour companies there that were offering up tours. Ketchikan was the same way. They had a lot of uh, buses and other tours that they were right there on the port. So... I would say to exercise caution when you're doing a non-cruise ship sponsored excursion because 
you do want to be careful and just make sure that if you're going to buy an excursion when you get off the boat, that you make sure that they understand what time it is that you need to be back. If you're doing a cruise line excursion and you bought your tickets on the cruise ship, should something happen to your tour, your you know your bus, or if you're on another boat, um, the cruise line will wait for you to come back. But if you're off on your own and you're not back in time, you are on your own to get to the next port and catch back up with the cruise ship that you are on. So I would have to say that most of these crew um tour they know that you know and so they they're gonna make sure you know and like they they even said to us when we were got off in Ketchikan and one of the tour people approached us and asked us if we had purchased any excursions and wanted to know if we wanted to book one with them and they said we'll make sure that you're back before your ship leaves. So I, we had to be back at either 12.30 or 1.30, and they said that they guaranteed that we would be back at least an hour before the cruise ship left. We opted not to go on one of those. We were still hemming and hawing a little bit about that Lumberjack show, um, and my husband, I think he just wanted to walk, you know, kind of walk around in and out of some of the shops and look at some of the different things that they had in the port. Um, you know, we walked up to, uh, like a little park bench type area and kind of checked that out a little bit and then walked around and saw their fire department. But I would just very, very much encourage that if you're not going to do an excursion through whatever cruise line that you're on, just make sure that the tour place knows what time your ship is leaving uh, and that they will make sure that you are back well before it's time for you to get on because the last thing that I would want is to hear that anybody took a, a tour and ended up missing their ship. So I think a lot of the play, a lot of the places and you know I saw it I've seen it in other areas as well um, but I would you know I think you know, Alaska's pretty small and they want to do their best to make sure that you're back on time because they know that their reputation is on the line. And I think that a lot of these places do do their best to, you know, get you back well before uh, you're supposed to be, you know, and a lot of them, you know, they know too, you know, they know what time you're getting off and they they know like these places are they're well aware that what ship is coming in what time they're getting there and what time they're getting back when we were in Ketchikan there were like four other cruise ships there and some of them got there after us in all these tour places they all knew what ship was coming in on and when and when all you know and they would ask you what ship are you on and they knew what time you had to be back so that's a great way to save a little bit of money if you want to do a, a tour just i just really can't stress enough to just make sure that when before you purchase your ticket with an independent tour guide that they know Hey, I'm on this sh this ship. Or how long is this tour? And if they say two hours, and you say, okay, well, you know, I have four hours here. I should be fine. But it doesn't hurt to just say, so you're gonna have us back by whatever time it is. It's eleven o'clock, so I'll be back by one o'clock, and let them, you know, because. I just would hate to see anybody end up getting stranded. And then, like I said, you are on your own to get to the next port and meet back up with the cruise ship. Now for us, Ketchikan was our last 
well, it wasn't our last stop. Um, we we had to have a foreign stop as well. So we went to Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. But I mean, that was, well, we cruised for over 24 hours before we got to that port. So I don't know what the distance is, but you certainly don't want to have to try and figure out how you're going to get from somewhere somewhere in Canada, be it Ketchikan, which is, I think, kind of like the farthest south to the next port, which was Canada. So just some things to uh, think about, keep in mind. So Ketchikan, I, I don't think that I mentioned this. I thought that the prices at the gift shops and everything in Ketchikan were incredible. They they had the best prices by far. Um, I did make purchases at each of the three stops, but I did I definitely thought that Ketchikan had the the most reasonable prices. Some some of the stores in there were just they were great. They had a great variety. Some of them had, you know, really good sales. And again, I'm sure that that's because it was end of season. One store that we went into had hoodies for $9.99, um, you know, where other places were selling very similar hoodies for the usual $40 or $50. So I would just say kind of, you know, keep in mind Look around a little bit. Don't make purchases at the first store you go in. Look around a little bit more and, you know, see if you find the the same or comparable item at other stores and just kind of keep keep a little bit of, you know, a track in your head what some of the prices are. I liked getting though uh things that weren't they weren't general Alaska. I really tried to buy, buy things that were specific that said Skagway or Ketchikan or um, Juno on them as opposed to just a general Alaska. The things that I bought that were general Alaska, I actually kind of ended up getting at our last stop. So I do hope that you found some of this information helpful. Um, I really, really enjoyed our Alaska cruise, and I it is something that I would definitely be interested in going back for. There was a lot to see and do, and now that I've got this own personal knowledge of the things and the prices and what to do, uh, it would definitely make our experience going back a lot different because now I know the things that I want to look for and the things that I want to do. I will do another video about, so we flew into Seattle and I'm going to do another video about Seattle because I found some things in Seattle were very interesting too. And I know Seattle is a, a big cruising terminal. So whether you're going to Seattle just a vacation there, or if you're doing a cruise and you're leaving from Seattle, hopefully it will be information that you will find helpful as well. So I hope that you subscribe to the channel Angela shows you and keep an eye out for my next video, which will probably be Seattle. And then I do intend on getting back to the uh, crafting that we've done in previous videos. But I wanted to get uh, the vacation and the cruising information out there while well, partially because it's still all fresh in my head and um you know I uh just wanted to share as as soon as I could so if you are if you're getting in on an Alaska cruise at the very end of the 2023 season I hope that this will be extremely helpful to you and if you're going in the 2024 season then um you know maybe loop back around in the spring and watch this again uh and I do hope that it helps you while you are on your vacation. Have a great day.